thousands of years before the banks of the Wabash beckoned pioneers to the Great Northwest. The land was home to the earliest known indigenous tribes of the Ohio Valley, the Woodland. Their burial mounds, still evident today, remained undisturbed for nearly 1,000 years before the first Europeans arrived. By the 1700s, French fur traders settled in the area, drawn by plentiful game and the natural trading highway the Wabash River provided, claiming the land for the French colony of Canada. The French had been developing the Wabash River as a, a new route to connect the northern area of Canada with the southern area of Louisiana. And they established a series of forts beginning with Detroit. And the logical thing then was to build a fort on the lower Wabash River. They chose for this one of the French Canadian Marine officers, Francois Marie Bissot, the Sieur de Vincennes. In 1730, he came down and brought with him a tribe of Piankasha Indians down into Louisiana and established his fort here. Known as The Post before being renamed Vincennes in 1735, the fort became the first European settlement in Indiana, home to a number of French-Canadian families who lived in peace alongside the neighboring Pinkashaw village. After the Sieur de Vincent's death in 1736, Louis Saint-Ange took over command. He decided to put the town on a more permanent basis by encouraging agriculture. They granted lands, in fact, laid out streets in the town. Uh, he also uh, decided to establish a church, the Church of St. Francis Xavier on the Wabash. The priests, of course, then taught school, and, and so you had education. And uh, Vincennes became on a more permanent basis. In 1754, the French and Indian War erupted across the territory. With the French defeat, all Canadian lands, including Vincennes, were placed under British rule. But as the American Revolutionary War began in the East, a young man by the name of George Rogers Clark formed a bold plan to capture the former French settlements, thus opening the Mississippi for safe passage and ensuring the Patriots continued war supplies from New Orleans. On July 4th of 1778, Clark and 150 men began their attack. Though greatly outnumbered, they successfully captured the forts, including Vincennes. Henry Hamilton, the British Lieutenant Governor of Detroit, received word of this and decided this was not going to stand. He formed an army of his own and headed down the Wabash River, arriving in the vicinity of Vincennes in December of 1778. The handful of men remaining at Vincennes were no match for Hamilton's army. He recaptured the fort without firing a single shot. But believing that Clark would dare not attack during winter, Hamilton released his army to home. Clark pounced. In February of 1779, he launched a brazen winter expedition. Falsely convinced that Clark had a large army just behind him, Hamilton surrendered. It was the largest land conquest of the Revolutionary War, eventually becoming known as the Northwest Territory in the newly formed United States. All the western part of the land in 1800 became the Indiana Territory, and Vincennes was selected as the capital city of this Indiana Territory. It was the oldest town in the territory. It was 70 years old by this time, way older than any other community. It was also centrally located. William Henry Harrison, who had been the Secretary of State, was appointed as governor of the new Indiana Territory, arrived out here in January of 1801 to set up the government. Harrison's arrival ushered in a new intellectual era for Vincennes. In 1801, he established the Jefferson Academy, today known as Vincennes University. He also hired an official printer, creating the territory's first newspaper, the Indiana Gazette. But it was Harrison's efforts outside of town that began to raise tensions. Governor Harrison made treaty after treaty with the surrounding tribes. By the end of the decade, he had ceded nearly 75% of the territory from the Native Americans. In 1810, Shawnee leader Tecumseh met with Governor Harrison to negotiate a land compromise. Harrison refused, and the resulting Battle of Tippecanoe led to the War of 1812. 
Harrison's victories as commander of the Northwest Army would earn him a gold medal for service and pave the way for his eventual presidency. In Harrison's absence, however, politicians moved the territorial capital from Vincennes to Corridon, and it was in Corridon that legislators drafted Indiana's first state constitution in 1816. Today, 100 miles away, Vincennes remains a testimony not just to the founding of the state, but the founding of the American West. Vincennes has a proud past. We're very proud of our history. We consider ourselves to be the most historical community in Indiana. We have the beginnings of religion represented by the old cathedral and the old cathedral library. We have our territorial center here, the territorial capital, that's the beginning of government, the Jefferson Academy, the beginning of education. So you get a lot of interpretation and in the beginnings of Indiana, and it is from the study of these beginnings that we give some inkling of why Indiana is the way it is.